Good evening. This is Maestro, with a break from your regular Faction War programming to bring you a 1v1 on Torillo's Forge. Of course, we're playing Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Mod, just in case I didn't say that. For our first player right here is going to be Pi of Reckoning, playing as the Eldar Warlock. This is a melee commander who can either become a spellcaster or a tank, and his opponent will be Inakura. Inakura is playing as the Tech Marine, a Space Marine ranged hero with a gun for every occasion and the ability to repair vehicles. So I do like to bring you a 1v1 from time to time, just had so few of them with the way things have been going. Our 1v1 right here between the Space Marines and the Eldar, this is certainly a matchup that I think uh, over the course of the game's history has, has probably often been discussed, complained about classically, and when I say classically, I mean over the years, and at, at the very least a long time ago, this matchup has favored Eldar for a variety of reasons. Now, of course, the meta changes over time with balance changes that, especially in this day and age, I can't even fully keep track of. So I'm not 100% sure of that. But there are definitely things about this matchup that we can still talk about that, you know, it's just a factor of th things that haven't changed, things that haven't changed over the years. We've still, Howling Banshees are still a unit. They're still incredibly dangerous. They have to be respected and they have to be dealt with. And I think that's very much one of the defining features of Eldar in Dawn of War 2, where Howling Banshees very much are kind of at the top of the totem pole for Tier 1 melee units. And as a result of that, they... They, there's a lot that they dictate. Oh man, but talk about this. Gonna grenade, gonna go in on that garrison. Only gonna catch the Tech Marine. The Tech Marine's actually getting out of there in time. But with the approach of these Howling Banshees, even though the Banshees don't have an aspect yet, there's gonna have to be a retreat from Inakura. And, I mean, of course part of that is the grenade. But also part of that is even just the Banshees walking up. The Banshees never even had a chance to fight. But even just the Banshees walking up, Inakura knows that he needs to respect that. If he waited... Uh, I'm going to say around two seconds longer to retreat, he would legitimately have to worry about the possibility of losing a tactical marine model or possibly even losing his tech marine, and that would be an absolutely unforgivable loss that could really ruin this game for him that early on in the game. So the, the Howling Banshees, they dictate so much like that. Uh, there they will get focused down a bit, though. Where... They demand some kind of answer. Now, typically one of those answers is shotgun scouts. We don't see shotgun scouts yet. And it also does strike me as very interesting that Inakur is only going with a single scout build, which this may be common in team games, but typically in 1v1 games, it is extremely common to go for a second scout. I think this might be a map where maybe you could get away with not getting a second scout, in part because I do think this does feel like a little bit of a of a smaller map to me. Um, and I think you could possibly get away with having a little bit less in terms of map control. Pie of Reckoning is also not building. He's only got three squads himself. So in terms of squad count, they're kind of matched in map control, at least in that regard. And of course, not all squads are equal in terms of map control, but at least in Akura it doesn't have to deal with Pie of Reckoning just flat out having more units. And so far we don't see a shotgun scout upgrade. So these Howling Banshees are going to get into melee here with the Taxi Marines. They will take the bunker, but they've already been suppressed. And the the Dire Avengers are going to chase them down. This is actually a really, really bad situation. This could be a wipe on the Tactical Marines. Howling Banshees can just wait there. Okay, scouts are going to try to save this situation, throwing a grenade at the Dire Avengers. The Dire Avengers are what would have to pressure the Tactical Marines out of the garrison. The, ban the Banshees would wipe the Tactical Marines once they get out of the garrison, but Inakur is actually managing to put enough pressure on the Howling Banshees that they might not even have that opportunity, which would be a huge save for Inakura, because he really put himself in a bad position there with the tactical marines in the garrison. The Howling Banshees instead turn and face the scouts. I feel like the tactical marine model needs to just... Oh, the tact doesn't have a good retreat path. Oh no, this is actually really bad. But the Mastercrafted Bolter will come in from the Tech Marine, and that is what will save that Tactical Marine squad. That that Mastercrafted Bolter was basically what saved that Tactical Marine squad. Like literally, without the Mastercrafted Bolter, this Tactical Marine squad would be dead. Like it would just it would just be dead. 
So really, really close call for Inakura. If I'm Inakura at this point, I don't know. Maybe stop using the garrison, or at least be very, very careful about it, because he's already used it twice. One time, he kind of got away with it. That time, he got a The second time, he got away by the skin of his teeth with that garrison play. And of course, part of the way garrisons work in Dawn of War 2, a little bit... Of course, me, conceptually, they're similar to the way garrisons work in Company of Heroes, but they're a little bit more polarizing than they are in Company of Heroes. In this game, garrisons are... If there are no garrison counters around, they can be very, very strong. But once there are garrison counters, they become death traps. And a big part of the reason why they become death traps is aside from the garrison counters, once you get out, you'll have also have to contend with whatever melee squads are looking to wipe you on retreat. And that very much looked like a possibility for those tactical marines. And they're, they're incredibly lucky. And again, the Mastercrafted Bolter purchase was basically what saved them from being wiped entirely. Now, I talked about how classically I feel like this matchup has favored Eldar. A grenade will go in there to disrupt the Guardian Weapon Team, but there's a second Guardian Weapon Team behind it. Assault Marines are going to want to look to jump on the back, gu back Guardian Weapon Team, and they definitely have the sight to do it. And this is looking like a pretty good engagement for... It was, it was looking like a pretty good engagement for Inakura, but here's something that came up again. The Howling Banshees counter-initiation counter -initiation against the Assault Marines, which is, it's how you're supposed to play the matchup. Typically, double Guardian Weapons Team's builds have been classically very common, uh, in part because you can layer the Firing Arcs like that, get the Howling Banshee. You want to try to get the Assault Marines to jump into the first one, but even if they don't, you have the Howling Banshees available to counter-initiate. And then once the Howling Banshees counter-initiated against the Assault Marines, the Assault Marines really had nothing left. Instant retreat from this Tech Marine. Wow. I mean, not even bothering with the Mastercrafted Bolter, high-powered shot, and again, super lucky and super clutch disruption on the Assault Marines right there, or rather by the Assault Marines on the Howling Banshees. Meanwhile, these Howling Banshees did have the Distortion Field Global active on them. Unique unique Global, but man, look, they're going to wipe the Assault Marines. Oh my god. This, I mean, I've, I've been talking about it. It's it's just, you need to respect Howling Banshees. And at this point, I'm, I'm honestly going to be a little critical of Inakura for not getting shotguns on any of his scouts. I think it's honestly incredibly difficult to make do with without shotguns on scouts in this matchup in particular. Really, in any matchup where you have to deal with melee units, whether it is, uh, whether it's Eldar, Orcs, Chaos, or, or Nids, shotguns will make your life easier when you're dealing with melee units. They, they just will, because you just have that instant, reliable, on-demand suppression and knockback And in my opinion, Space Marines have very, very few options, especially in Tier 1, that are as reliable. And out of all the Space Marine heroes, I personally I personally like the, the Tech Marine's chances the best against Eldar. Or at the very least, I like his chances the best for having to deal with Howling Banshees. Now, we didn't see the shotguns, but that's, of course, also why we saw the Mastercrafted Bolter. I think we had to see one of these. I don't think there really was... Well, there was a choice. It was either shotguns or Mastercrafted Bolter. If I personally had my choice, I think I would have gone with both. But since he didn't go with shotguns, that practically made the Mastercrafted Bolter a mandatory upgrade because he needed something to control the Howling Banshees. Now, I do understand why some Space Marine players will try to forego early shotguns in some matchups. And the thinking behind it is just that you want to just be able to kite, you want to just be able to focus fire, and... You want to do that so that you can conserve resources by not spending the resources on shotguns and saving that for other things later on, teching to tier 2 faster. Um, well, not just that, but I'm teching to tier 2 faster, getting tier 2 units out faster. Right now, this composition heavily favors Pie of Reckoning, but of course the Dreadnought will change that just a little bit. <laughs> Double tactic Marines actually will have the advantage here if the Wraith Guard are just going to approach by themselves. <laughs> Howling Banshees are here, but they're already really low on health. And against Double tactic Marines, they might proc a special attack. I think it's really more the Guardian and Weapon teams that give Pie of Reckoning the win here. 
So we are going to see a Falcon as well as a Dreadnought come out. I would have thought the expected trajectory of this matchup would be Falcon versus Wraithguard. Now, of course, in that matchup, Falcon does kind of have a slight advantage based on the fact that it can actually do anti-vehicle damage, whereas the Razorback wouldn't. But, of course, you can also do things like get a missile launcher and a tactical marine squad, put that into a Razorback, and then it's, you know, kind of like a the Space Marine version of Truck Busters. Brightlands Cannon will be out on one of these Guardian Weapon Seams. Pretty much a mandatory upgrade at this point. Uh, as long as the Dreadnought's out, you really need that Guardian Weapon Team. One of them with a Brightlands to realistically put enough threat on this Dreadnought for to not completely overrun Pi of Reckoning's army. So yeah, I mean, oh wow, he's going with the double Guardian Weapons team. That's a huge amount of pressure against the Dreadnought. And a big part of the reason why Pi of Reckoning can afford to give up both of his Guardian Weapons team's Shuriken Cannons is the fact that he already dealt with the... He already dealt with the Assault Marines. He already wiped them. And that's huge. Uh, if he did not have... The, if he did not actually have that, man, this Dreadnought's probably going to go down. This is a quick end to this Dreadnought. So that Dreadnought got like nothing done. This is a rough game for Anakura. Um, getting rid of the Assault Marines means the, the need for suppression really is, is nowhere near as pressing for Pi of Reckon. He was able to afford giving up both of the suppression weapons to just hard counter the Dreadnought. And there are definitely some side effects to doing this. Like, he, now that he's gotten rid of the Dreadnought, now both of these Guardian Weapon teams are very minimally useful. Just in general. There's not a whole lot they can do. They can capture victory points. They can bash down some generators. I um, believe they still have that ability. They still have an ability that can help against infantry, but their effectiveness is still not great uh, against infantry. Pretty much, uh, re really just not. So scouts still running out here with shotguns. Uh, in spite of all of the unit and army and fight victories for Pi of Reckoning, he has not entirely been able to con convert this into victory point and map control. He's actually slightly losing in victory points, which is honestly a little bizarre. It is honestly a little bizarre. He's got twice the army that Inakura has. He's playing as Eldar, which kind of innately usually have better map control just based on generally being faster. So it's it's honestly pretty bizarre, but it looks like he will turn it in his favor soon enough. The These Dire Avengers will be capturing this victory point. Soon to be a triple cap in favor of Pi of Reckoning, but I think Inakura will see if maybe he can get back the bottom victory point, which is currently pretty much undefended. But he's going to find his tactical marines already taking quite a bit of damage. Plasma Gun out from from one of these tactical marine squads. Of course, he is trying to deal with the Wraith Guard. Howling Banshees, though. Man, that's actually kind of lucky for the Howling Banshees. Uh, if anything, I don't even know if I agree with that retreat from Inakura. I feel like he stayed in there just a little bit longer. Could have possibly threatened the wipe on those Howling Banshees. And I even think losing a tactical marine model or two would actually be worth wiping the Howling Banshees. Now, of course... For those, you know, more astute viewers who kind of know what's going on, probably what they would have seen was that Pi of Reckoning was trying to move the Falcon ahead in time so that he could probably try to reinforce the Banshees so that they wouldn't die, which is a possibility. But honestly, with where Inakura is at this time, I almost feel like it's worth the risk to at least try to wipe the Howling Banshees there. I think there's a decent chance that he could have gotten the wipe on the Howling Banshees before the Falcon was able to move up in time and the reinforcements were able to come through. This is probably going to be a lost fight uh, for Inakura. Certainly got a lot of tankiness, but Merciless Witchblade is there from the Warlock. Warlock is actually in a lot of trouble, though. So the Warlock might not get out of here alive. I still think it'll probably be a one fight for Inakura. His tactical means, even with and they shall know no fear active, just taking way too much damage, and most of the damage was just focused on the Warlock. It's a small win for Inakura, but, you know, it's not to be, uh, not to be diminished as... Pi of Reckoning is also not in a great position to revive at this time. And if he did want to revive, it would mean canceling. It would mean canceling Tier 3 at the moment if he wanted it up fast. So Inakar going with another Dreadnought, which is interesting to see. And he's going to go for the Multi-Melta. So we'll see if this enables him to get much more value than his last one. I'm actually uh, pretty worried about this. The Multi-Melta Dreadnought is not a long-range unit. And it's still heavily outranged by the Guardian Weapons teams. And... 
although it definitely wins, it has a lot more health than the Falcon. I think with good reaction time, the Falcon just back up in time, move into the cover of the Guardian weapon teams with the Bright Lance. I mean, the, the Guardian weapon team with the Bright Lance actually even more forward. Big, big shots coming in from those Wraith Guard, knocking one of those tactical Marine squads down to a, to a single model. All right, so the Dreadnought is able to move forward, if anything. Okay, one of the Guardian weapon teams had to get back inside, and I think this Dreadnought does have Blessing of the Omnissiah active, so that's going to help it tank a lot of this damage. Then the Tech Marine is going to be looking for Force Melee on the Guardian weapon team to shut it down. So that, that particular engagement pretty well played. Ooh, and wow, we're actually going to see the Falcon finished off. I, I'm a little bit surprised there. I think, in my opinion, I think that's mispositioning by Pie of Reckoning where the first Guardian weapon team was pretty far forward. It got forced off, in my opinion, a little bit too early. Uh, and then the second one, I would say, was was also a little too far forward. Although it was behind the first one, as well as behind the Falcon, I think it needed to be even farther back. In fact, in my opinion, I think both Guardian weapon teams... Uh, of course, he was trying to bash with one of the Guardian weapon teams, but I think to ideally bait the Dreadnought, he would want both of them well behind the Falcon, because the Falcon there is the bait. Uh, and then the Guardian weapon teams are kind of the trap, I guess. That's that's how the metaphor goes. So that does enable an occur to start to come back into this game. And, oh, of course. I was going to say, why is this Guardian weapon team so far forward? Oh man, it's you know it's still way too far too far forward. This Guardian weapon team could actually be wiped here, and that would be a huge one. That's going to be a wipe. Oh man, I mean, he was trying to get away from the Tech Marine, but he was he was delivering the Guardian Weapon Team right into a Dreadnought's Vist. This is actually looking really suspect for Pi of Reckoning at the moment. He still has a Guardian Weapon Team that could theoretically finish off this Dreadnought if he can get, he can get a shot, but it's not going to. Oh, Mastercrafted Bolter. That's going to finish off the second Guardian Weapon Team. So, in my opinion, kind of pretty big misplays from Pi of Reckoning. And the Dreadnought even stays alive. That's that's honestly pretty crazy. And of course, we still have our scouts running around without shotguns. I mean, I guess he weathered the storm long enough that he did have things like the Dreadnought. And he, he is making good use of that Mastercrafted Bolter. And that is part of the reason why, before I said that, I, I feel like the Tech Marine kind of has a better end, in my opinion, of uh, possibly this matchup, and certainly in terms of dealing with Howling Banshees. He's got some very reliable melee counters of his own, the Mastercrafted Bolter. Could have also gotten Bionic, Bionics, but the Mastercrafted Bolter proving to be enough for Inakura. So, of course, we did also see Wraithguard finishing off the uh, multi melta Dreadnought, so certainly a lot of losses in this game. Uh, Pie of Reckoning, when he still had a bigger army, was able to convert it into map control finally. And man, now we've also got Seer Council. Seer Council, of course, a squad of Warlocks. And, you know, between the Howling Banshees that are now level 2, Seer Council, and this Warlock. Okay, like, I'm, Inakura needs something else other than the Tech Marine with the Mastercrafted Bolter. The Mastercrafted Bolter by itself will no longer be enough to deal with all of that. They, they just won't. It just won't. So he's going for another Dreadnought. And you know what? At this point, the Dreadnought is actually really, really good. Uh, especially given that both of the Guardian Weapon teams have been taken off the board. Although, it wouldn't be impossible for Pi of Reckoning to just get a new one. Uh, my guess, though, is he probably wants something else. Maybe he's going to look for some kind of big Tier 3 purchase. Instead, he has to buy back his Warlock. But still, the combination of the Warlock, the Banshees, as well as the Seer Council, I think is going to be extremely oppressive. And Inakura still does not really have an easy answer against the Wraith Guard. So it's going to be another lost fight for Inakura. Now, Dreadnought, of course, coming out is going to change things. That's his, that's his additional answer to the melee of Pie of Reckoning, or maybe it isn't. Instead, he's going to go for the Assault Cannon. And at this time, I'm honestly going to question that. Uh, I feel like the just the starting fist would be fantastic against the Seer Council, as well as the Howling Banshees, as well as the Warlock. Uh, and it really turns out the only thing that can really threaten the the Dreadnought from range is the Wraith Guard. And guess what? The Wraith Guard, if he just walks up to the Wraith Guard, he'll do a lot of damage to that too. Now, theoretically, he can also use the Assault Cannon 
as a way of countering melee since it does do knockdown, it does do a lot of damage, but it's definitely not anywhere near as reliable since it is a targeted skill shot that can miss. However, we are going to see suppression there on that Seer Council, probably from the, another shot from the Mastercrafted Bolter. And the Seer Council having a lot of trouble getting in. They're, they're losing so many hit points. At this point, I would start to entertain the idea of a Channeling Runes upgrade from the Warlock. Now, Channeling Runes, um, <laughs> it's funny, he could have gotten that a long time ago. But I feel like even more so now, committed to this Howling Banshee and Seer Council build, that Channeling Runes would really be the ideal uh, upgrade for the Seer Council. Or rather, the Warlock. Uh, alternatively, he could also just go for Warp Throw. And I think that would actually do fantastically as well. Because he could just Warp Throw the Tack Blob into his Howling Banshees and his Seer Council. And that would also be absolutely brutal. That, I think, has a little bit more counterplay than the Channeling Runes. Because that does open up the possibility that uh, the Dreadnought just kind of responds with the Assault Cannon Barrage. And even if it does mean the tacks do take some friendly fire damage, I think they can withstand that damage a little bit better than the Howling Banshees and the Seer Council can. Mm, definitely, the, definitely the Howling Banshees. The Seer Council I'm not as sure about. But man, there certainly is damage against the Howling Banshees. This might be the Howling Banshees going down in retreat. And that's such a big pickup for Inakura. If he can do it, oh no, he won't get it. It would have been such a big pickup for him to wipe those level 3 Howling Banshees. Still going to be a lot of reinforcement cost for Pie of Reckoning. But uh, it's it's still so important that he does keep it alive. All right, so victory point lead for Pie of Reckoning, 312 to 154. So Pie of Reckoning in Tier 3. He hasn't gotten much going as far as Tier 3 stuff aside from the Seer Council. And some of that has to do with the fact that he had to buy back his Warlock. And also, a lot of these Howling Banshee reinforcement costs also kind of keeping him... In Tier 3, without having many opportunities to buy more units beyond that one Seer Council squad. Or even any other unit. Like, not just a Tier 3 unit. Could have also taken that, uh, used those resources to get a new Guardian Weapon Team out. In fact, very soon he could get a new Guardian Weapon Team out, but my guess is he probably doesn't want one. Just kidding! <laughs> So, does recognize the importance of getting the Guardian Weapon Team. Uh, I didn't think he would want one, mostly just because there were a lot of times when I saw him getting really close to the resources requi required for guard a Guardian Weapon Team and then not getting one. But I think it's just something that he needs to really, really just make... He, it's kind of like when I talked about respecting the Howling Banshees. In this case, Pie of Reckoning needs to respect the Dreadnought. Just the massive amount of vehicle armor, the fact that... With, he doesn't have a particularly reliable uh, counter to them without having the Guardian Weapon Team. Finally does upgrade to a Bright Lance uh, right out of the gate, pretty much, which is... Anyway. And the Wraith Guard, of course, can certainly do damage to the Guardian Weapons, to the Dreadnought, but it's it's a lot harder for them to get set up and actually be allowed to shoot. Guardian Weapon Team, no, this might be an early, a quick wipe on this Guardian Weapon Team. Another burst of fire, not going to finish it off, though. More close calls, though, for Pie of Reckoning. Blessing of the Omnissiah just making this Dreadnought even more impressive. Inakur going with the late-game Dreadnought spam. That'll be a Wraith Guard model going down. Howling Banshees, of course, can do some light damage to the Dreadnought, especially given that they are Aspect of Strength Banshees. They do have that heavy melee Executioner Spear, but they still... Oh my god, this, okay. Guardian Weapon Team just barely gets out of there in time. Actually, they're going to finish off the Dreadnought. Why are they turning around? Finish off the Dreadnought. It is a space marine dreadnought. Yeah. I mean, a lot in a lot of cases, a ranged Dreadnought, I think... Still probably would out-trade a Howling Banshee squad in certain situations where, like, it has more health going into the fight. It's not already brought down to low health from other sources. So another Dreadnought for Inakura. He's just giving them away at this point. Uh, and another one with an Assault Cannon. Now, the Assault Cannon Dreadnought does do a better job of responding to the Guardian Weapon Team, but I would still, like, at least if he hadn't lost uh, that previous Dreadnought, I would have liked to see this one stay as, as just a melee Dreadnought 
to just really put the hurt on the Howling Banshees or the Seer Council. The Howling Banshees were able to finish off that Dreadnought previously when it was at low health. Not quite sure it would be able to do that against a Melee Dreadnought. Melee Dreadnought, although Banshees can do some light damage, the Melee Dreadnought just, would just massively outtrade. Okay, Seer Council will be in Melee here. Grenade will be thrown. One Seer Council model does step on it and actually does bite it as a result. So he does lose that model, certainly does uh, reduce the effectiveness of that Seer Council model, Seer Council squad, losing one of those models. Pie of Reckoning, unfortunately, very unfortunately for him, has lost the Warlock again. Distortion Field yet again on the Seer Council, but they're already suppressed. They're suppressed by the Mastercrafted Bolter. And then I also believe the Assault Cannon actually does do some Courage damage. So I think that can also keep the Seer Council suppressed for a little bit longer. As we do, did see, they were suppressed for like what felt like ages. And I think the primary reason they got unsuppressed was that the Dreadnought was actually shooting at the Wraith Guard. Since the Wraith Guard did present a bigger threat to the Dreadnought than the Seer Council did. Whereas the Seer Council were mainly going for the Tech Marine. Seer Council are in melee here, but they're getting knocked over because the Stern Guard veterans have And They Shall Know No Fear active, giving them a 35% chance to proc special attacks. And They Shall Know No Fear has has, has expired. So Howling Banches are able to get in there. They do take two models off those uh, those Stern Guard veterans. And here we see also see, kind of see the unreliability there of the Assault Cannon Dreadnought as a melee counter. Unless it's unless he was just trying to target the Wraith Guard, but I find that unlikely since the Wraith Guard models themselves are actually immune to that knockback. I think it was mostly attempted as a way of trying to deal with the Howling Banshees, but it missed. They were able to just run past it. Unfortunately, Howling Banshees now are getting suppressed actually by the friendly fire of the Wraith Guard. Oh, just a quick give by that Dreadnought on one of those Dire Avenger models. So, our game looking pretty even at the moment. Late game Warp Spiders, my god. Late game Warp Spiders, that's very interesting to see them this late. I mean, of course, th the problem with this late game Warp Spider purchase is that they were literally purchased for the Haywire Grenade. Like, they weren't purchased really for the purpose of the, the Warp Spider as a squad. They were purchased for the Haywire Grenade. So that means that Pie of Reckoning is actually having that much trouble with the Dreadnought that he's finally just decides he needs the Haywire all the way into Tier 3. Although it's really Pie of Reckoning who's in Tier 3 and Inakur is not. Which, again, that still speaks volumes in my opinion. Um, because at this point in the game, the truth is the Warp Spider... The Warp Spider squad... Like, I'm a big believer in Warp Spiders in general as a squad. This isn't actually that great of a situation for them outside of the warp spot, outside of the haywire, to deal with the dreadnought. Like they would honestly do terrible against level four stern guard veterans with hellfire rounds. They're going to do pretty bad against tact level four tactical marines, even with a plasma gun. Uh, they're going to do really, really bad against a tech marine who's level eight with the mastercrafted bolter as well, who's also about to get the artificer armor. So the only things that the that the warp spiders are really good against are the scouts and putting a haywire on the dreadnought and they also have to worry a huge amount about the dreadnought as well because of that assault cannon yeah it's it's honestly a pretty questionable warp spider purchase and this is i'm saying this is someone who's honestly a very very big believer in warp spiders overall even against space marines but man th this honestly this even with a lead in victory points it does show a little bit about how much pie of reckoning is kind of struggling to deal with these dreadnoughts certainly this last one these late ones even though he is getting kills on them. The Dreadnoughts are achieving too much before they actually die, aside from that first one that achieved like nothing. Another Assault Cannon Barrage goes in. <laughs> warp Spiders are actually being tied up by the Scouts. I think in the long run, I, I feel like the Warp Spiders should actually win this, but there is also the Dreadnought here that can eventually support the the scouts whenever it wants to. Both squads will eventually retreat out of there with, um, oh, may, you know what? I might actually be wrong there. I Maybe, like, level one white warp spiders against, like, level one or two scouts. But this that's a fully upgraded scout squad. Fully upgraded scout squad at level four against a warp spider squad that does not have an Exarch. So the scouts might actually do okay there, also because scouts, as it turns out, actually have 
the melee resistance uh, ability, granting them 40% reduced damage against melee attacks, whereas the warp spiders do not have that. It's a passive ability, one that's hard to really know. You really need to, like, check the codex or really just know these things. And now we have another Dreadnought out of Inakura. Th this is crazy, considering what I've said about the matchup, as well as uh, definitely Pie of Reckoning actually still technically has the victory point lead. But at this point, I'm honestly calling Inakura winning this game uh, with the way things have gone in the end. He, I don't think he can capture this victory point. Pie of Reckoning, that is. So Inakura currently with, with the 2 to nothing cap. I mean, Pie of Reckoning is in a really rough spot where he's just trying to capture under duress. I mean, he's he's got Providence. Literally upgrading to Providence, I think, solely for the purpose of trying to cap, and he doesn't even do it. That's so rough. So it's about to be a triple cap against him. He has so little time, and he's trying to do situations where he's just trying to split off his units to cap because he, there's so much urgency for him to get victory points back at this time. When I think ultimately... I think what he ultimately really needs to do and what he's quickly running out of time for is go for a big fight. Go for a big fight where he can force, re at, at the very least, force retreats, possibly force some kills. But he's, time is really ticking because it's still, the two to nothing cap against him means that even time spent fighting is time spent not capping. All right, he can get one back. He can get one back here. He's gonna commit the Howling Banshees for it. I think the, oh, but the Dire Avengers, they're in so much trouble. Oh, but they actually go down from the damage over time from the Hellfire rounds. Dire Avenger is not the biggest loss for Pi of Reckoning at the moment. I, I think this game is actually already over. Dead Warp Spiders, yeah. This game is done. Yeah, he calls the GG. He knows that's it. All right. Well, that is it. Interesting game. Do hope you enjoyed it. Especially this persistent <laughs> assault cannon sound. <laughs> All right, guys, have a good night.